Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Truth Baptist Church. I hope you all had a great week uh, this past 4th of July week. Uh, wonderful time. Uh, hope that you all had a good time cooking out, spending time with friends and family. Last Sunday after church service, we had a cookout and a softball game that was really fun. Uh, so hope you all had a good time also. And uh, this week, uh, Pastor Hastings is actually out of town. He's on vacation. Uh, with his family. Uh, so Brother Greg will be giving us a message today, and I'll be preaching this evening, and he'll be leading worship. Uh, but uh, please let us all stand, and just thinking about, for me, thinking about the week of celebrating our country, the freedom that our country has, uh, the worship uh, and the hymns I was thinking of are glorifying God for the victory we have. So let us worship, uh, turn to 353, Victory in Jesus, and worship our Lord for the victory we have in him. I heard it all. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power, revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. I'm so thankful for the country that we have, the freedoms that we have. The, it is such a great country, but it is not compared to our eternal home that we will get to experience one day. Amen. Uh, please let us all turn now to 323 at the cross. Hymn 323, not far away at the cross. Jesus, at 
this. But drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Dear Lord, I give myself away, tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Please remain standing for, uh, for uh, messages from Brother Greg. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. It's good to see everyone here this morning. I'm glad you're able to make it out. And I do want to uh, remember uh, the pastor and his family as they're out, but we do also have a special prayer we want to have for the press crows. Uh, uh, many of you already know, but uh, uh, they were uh, out on vacation, I, I guess, at a family reunion. But there was, last night they were at a motel, and about 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, someone... Uh, lost control of the vehicle, their truck, and plowed into uh, Brother Pes Prescrow's Suburban, which m he was parallel and it moved it over, hit Bonnie's Jeep, and then that hit uh, the sister-in-law's uh, car, totaled all of them, and then two others. And um, so uh, they, they've got to wait until tomorrow to get a, another vehicle to, to get all of those folks in there, I forget exactly how many, but all the car seats were were uh, ruined and damaged and all that, so I uh, do want to remember them in prayer, and uh, anyone else that's traveling, Tina's on her way back from Florida, so uh, we'll remember her in prayer too, and the pastor and his family, Any, anyone else that I might be neglecting to think, sp speak real loud for me. Uh, yes, yes, Ashley, yeah, don't forget to remember, uh, let's remember him in prayer too, as he is healing uh, from the injury that he had, and all right, any, anything else real quick before I pray? There's a whole lot more people traveling than just I, what I mentioned, so yeah, let's do, all right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We do thank you, Lord, for this day, we thank you for the, uh, just the, uh, being able to wake up and to be able to come to church and uh, to worship thee. And we do want to remember the ones that we mentioned in prayer. Uh, we think, uh, first of all, uh, for Ashley as he is healing from his injury. I pray, Lord, that uh, thou was continued to give him grace as he goes through this healing process. And uh, Dorinda as well as she takes care of him. And then also, Lord, all of those that are traveling, we think of our pastor who's away on vacation, who'll be coming back, uh, I believe, Monday. Uh, pray that you, uh, Thou was give him uh, the safety of travel and be with Tina as she's coming back from Florida. Uh, give her safety. And then uh, we pray for the press crows that, uh, number one, we thank thee, Lord, that, uh, that it didn't happen during the day while they were driving. Uh, but we do pray, Lord, that thou was take care of the needs that are there, uh, especially tomorrow and uh, in the future with their vehicles. I pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts to receive thy word today. Uh, help us to be able to lay aside the things that uh, uh, perhaps this week we've been dwelling on and the things that may be troubling us. Help us, Lord, to take those things and lay them aside for this next hour and uh, to be able to open thy word and to grasp what the truth is that thou hast have us to grasp today. Thank thee, Lord, for all that have been able to come here today. And I pray that thou hast bless them. In Jesus' holy name we ask. Amen. You may be seated. Well, just um, as I've already mentioned, just continue to remember all of those that are traveling. I know that you may know some by name that are traveling. I, matter of fact, I think, uh, uh, Holly, you're leaving Thursday. Is that what she said? Thursday. So, and she's on her fourth trip. I think she's doing a marathon, you know. So, but uh, she's on her fourth trip. She's going to South Carolina. So don't forget to pray for her as well. And, uh, and any of the others that you may think of during the week that I may not have mentioned. Um, now, we have uh, just a couple of announcements. VBS is coming up very soon, and we need, uh, we have, we need you to help. We have some sign-up sheet in the back that still has some blanks that are empty. If you're able to help in VBS, uh, we'd love for you to sign up 
and, uh, and put down there where you would like to, to help at. And we also have a, a little more urgent need in that, and we need uh, someone to help uh, decorate um, in here, and I guess other places, I'm not sure, but if you think that you could do that, uh, could you speak to Miss Margaret after the service? She, she could uh, uh, use the help in decorating uh, the VBS. So if, if you're able to do that, it'd be very, very grateful and very important if, if you could speak with her and, and let her know, and then she can get all the details to you. All right, um, was Chris, was there something? Oh, yes, there is. I said there was two, and I remember it. Uh, the older you get, it's just that quick. Uh, Tonight, we do have um, uh, Ambassador Quartet going to be with us from Ambassador Bible College. Um, they're going to be with us. Brother Chris is going to be preaching tonight. But um, I do hope you'll come back to hear. They'll be singing, doing uh, several specials, uh, Ambassador Bible College Quartet. It is, it is the Ambassador, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. We have a couple that come and haven't, haven't seen Ambassador in a little while. So, um, okay, I see a hand back there. Oh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm getting to that right now. Thank you, though. Um, but uh, I hope you can come back tonight and be with us for that service. It would be a great encouragement to the, to the college as well. So our ushers are going to come down, and uh, they have within, in their hands, they have a visitor's packet. If you're here for the first time, number one, we want to thank you for being here and appreciate your presence so much. And uh, if you're here, would you just lift your hands, and our ushers have a, um, a little packet to give to you. And as they're coming down, uh, we also want to uh, welcome all those who may be listening and watching on Facebook this morning and whoever might watch it later on YouTube. Now, ushers are going to come, uh, come on back up as soon as they get their offering plates. And um, uh, we're going to take our... Uh, no, we got another song first, don't we? No. You know, when I'm sitting over here, I know what's going on. When I'm over here... I don't have a clue. It's, just, it's that side, isn't it? So what's coming? It's the offering, right? All right. I, whew, I tell you what, it's been so long, I just don't know what in the world's going on anymore. Y'all. I'm glad y'all are keeping me straight here, I tell you what. All right, we're going to have a word of prayer for the offering, and uh, this is our regular offering, and I'm going to ask uh, uh, Brother Tom if you would pray.
Amen. Thank you very much, Holly, and thank you, Brother Greg. Thank you very much. And uh, let us all stand. We'll turn to 583. You are my all in all. You are my all in all. Is truly above all is Jesus Christ for us. strength when I am weak. You're the treasure that I seek. You're my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, you give up. I'd be a fool. You're my all in all. Jesus Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You're my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You're my all in all. Now let us uh, sing the chorus of the month, God Bless America. It should be in your bulletins as well as on the back screen here. And we will take a pause halfway through to greet one another uh, and then sing the last verse again. So. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her.
God bless America, the land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America. Please be seated and we'll have a music special. children you may be dismissed and the rest of us let's take our Bibles and open to Hebrews uh, chapter 10 and uh, what a wonderful special remind me remind me dear Lord and uh, you know it's not a bad thing to every once in a while 
ask the Lord to help you remember where you came from and, uh, and where we could have been. And uh, that's, um, that's very important. And, uh, you know, the Lord, um, I don't know if it's this mic or if it's me that's ringing, um, but it's, it's so wonderful to um, think about where the Lord has brought us from and obviously what we would have been had we continued down that same path. And really, a lot of what they were singing about is uh, about faith, you know, um, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And really, uh, that's what I want to talk to you tonight, uh, t today. See, I'm all messed up. Tina's not here. <laughs> and you know how that goes. Um, 39 years in August, and um, I, had to, I had to get Laura to pick out my tie this morning. And uh, I'm finding that the older I get, the colors are starting to meld together, you know, green and gray and blue, and it's like, what is this? What color is this? So I'm going to just start buying all neutral colors, you know, and just, but, uh, so you, you all forgive me, uh, uh, Laura's been taking good care of me, but uh, uh, Tina's not here, she's traveling. It's kind of scary, you know, when they're traveling and flying in the air and that kind of thing. So y'all pray for it. Pray for the pastor, especially when you hear about what's happening at the press grove. And, you know, I just thank the Lord they weren't in there. Man, what a mess. But we live by faith. You know, we live by faith. I told someone not too long ago that they were telling me about some issues they were having. They just come through a uh, trying year of physical issues and it looked like there was only the other side of it and we were talking at lunch and uh, then he, he began to tell me some other things and um, at the end of the whole thing I, I looked at him and I said you know you have accepted Christ from your own testimony you know the Lord is the Savior ultimately it's in his hands right it's in his hands and I'm glad because I'm going to tell you something. If it was in my hands, I'd already be gone. I'd be a mess. And it's all about faith in our life. Look at chapter 10, verse 38. I'm going to go ahead and get my handkerchief out. Because if I don't wipe away the tears, I can't read. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, draw back from what? Faith. If any man draw back, what does it say? My soul shall have what? No pleasure. Do we bring pleasure to the Lord in our faith? Is the Lord finding pleasure with me, with you, as I walk in faith, as you walk in faith? Is he, is he getting pleasure in your activity of faith? You know, it's easy a lot of times, a lot of folks will say, oh, I don't, want to be, I don't want to be a Christian because it's a bunch of rules of do's and don'ts. The trouble is that if we're doing, living for as a Christian only because it's do's and, at the rules of do's and don'ts, that's not faith. And I can follow rules. I can do rules of do's and don'ts. But that doesn't draw me closer to the Lord. You remember the Jews tried the same thing? Many of them had gotten saved, and they were growing in the Lord. And then you had some Pharisees or some Judaizers that came in and started messing up their thinking, and they went back to the 
Ten Commandments or the Old Testament, the Mosaic Law, and tried to start living by that. And there had to be some correction that was given. Folks, Christianity or living for God is not about do's and don'ts. Don't misunderstand me. There are do's and don'ts in there. And because we live for the Lord and because our faith is in the Lord and because I love the Lord, there's some things I'm not going to do. And there are some things I'm going to do. But I don't do it as a work salvation. I don't do it because this is what I need to do or this is what I have to do in order to be right. I do it because I love the Lord. And He loves me. And I have no faith without Him. I am incapable of faith without him. Do you know he had to provide the faith for me to even have faith in him and what he did? Faith is a wonderful thing. And it's a way that we show to the Lord that we love him. The just shall live by what? Faith. The just shall live by faith. Romans 1, 17 and 3, 11. Both of them say that. So first of all, what is faith? What is faith? And by the way, I, I, I don't, I hope that the tears don't, don't bother you. John Hart Rice. You ever remember? Anybody remember him? I remember hearing him as a lad preaching. And he told the story about how someone chided him about crying and having tears when he preached. And he prayed, God, take away my tears. And God did. And he said that he really noticed a change in his preaching for the worse. The compassion, the heartfelt deliverance, if you will, but things changed. And he saw that the souls weren't being saved. The Holy Spirit wasn't moving like before. After a good search in his own soul and heart, he realized it was because he had asked God to remove the tears. And so he prayed, God, give me back my tears. And God graciously did. Our Sunday school class or connection class, we've been going through a book. Basically being like Christ. I can't even remember the title. Changed to the image of Christ. Yes, thank you. Whew. I read the book and I don't even look at the title. But in this book it talks about how we as Christians a lot of times get into the habit of, of living outside of what God has asked us to live and do. That our all in all, that our life that our movement, that everything about us is in Christ. It's not out here. It's not in our make-believe reality because reality is found in the Scripture. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the more I read in that book, the more convicted I get. The more I read and study and the more I understand what's being said, and the more I, I, I study God's Word, and the more I read God's Word, and the more I, I plead with God, help me. And I look at my life, and my life is just not what God intended. And I go and move through this life, 
and things come up and I try to solve those things in my own mind, in my own will, in my own power. When the whole time the Lord has said, cast your burden at my feet. And he said in James chapter 4, to draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. Because only then can you resist the devil and he'll flee from you. A lot of us try to resist the devil in our own power and what happens? It's a wreck. We end up doing the same thing over and over. You ever brought something down here and laid it at the altar only two days later to find you picked it up? Walked away with it when you walked out of church that day. You find yourself in the same position that you were in maybe a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, and maybe a year ago. You find that the sermons that our pastor is giving such deep, good sermons out of God's Word, do you find that they don't don't even affect your heart at all? Do you find yourself thinking, okay, just a few more minutes, it'll be over, and I can get out and go do this or that? When was the last time that you or I prayed, Lord, open my heart. Help me to receive thy word that you have for me this morning. That'll change me to be more like thee. When was the last time we prayed before service? Before we ever even got here? Or does it matter? I've heard people say, oh, you know, as a matter of fact, Brother John and I were talking about it this morning. People will say, oh, you know, the Bible's not relevant for the world today. Let me tell you something, if you want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ the way that you and I should have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it is all relevant. It is the only thing that's relevant, is His Word and the relationship that we have with Him. I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it without Christ. And I am so thankful that He loves me. You know, he came and died on the cross for our sins. And what gets me is that before creation, because if you look it up, it was the whole Trinity involved in creation. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And before they even created anything, Jesus Christ knew he'd have to come to this earth and die for us. Before we were ever created. Now folks, if that's not love, then I don't know what is. He loves you beyond measure. Beyond your comprehension, God loves you. In that while you and I were such rotten, dirty, filthy sinners who spit in the face of God with our lifestyle and with our thoughts and the way that we live, He loves us. How many earthly, how many earthly people, man and woman, who are married would put up with the things that even Christians do today, much less a heavenly, holy God who loves me and says, I love you too much to go away or to be away from you. But you have turned from me, and I want you back. And do you know God says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not hear me. He will not hear me. But he's always listening for forgiveness. And when I know there's sin in my life separating me and God, even though I'm a Christian, I can still have sin in my life that will separate my fellowship from him. And I know that there's things in my life and I'm going on and trying to live my life as though everything's okay. God is waiting and listening 
before that one prayer, Lord, forgive me. Please forgive me and wash me clean from this filth. Not my soul. My soul's redeemed. But this flesh is not. And just like in old days past, the Israelites would go visit someone. Do you know they had a servant sitting there in a bowl, a washing bowl? And before they walked into the house, the servant would wash the feet of the guests. You know why? Because walking down that road, they got their feet dirty. And I'm going to tell you something. Walking down this road of life, I'm getting my feet dirty. And I'm still in this old sinful flesh. And this old sinful flesh, I'm going to tell you, it's giving me a rough time. Is it you? And so I have to go to God and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I let it get the best of me again. Please forgive me and help me to be more like you. What is faith? Well, the Oxford Dictionary, the definition of faith is this. Complete trust or confidence, firm belief, especially without logical proof. A system of religious belief, belief in religious doctrines. Well, in Hebrews 11:1, 1, look what it says there. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I used to teach 8th through 12th grade Bible. And, you know, guys, when they're they, 8th, ninth grade, I guess, they go through puberty, maybe earlier than that, but they start getting a little, a little dirt under the nose, yeah. And I'd, I'd see them in class, and I'd start looking at them, and I just smile at them. They said, what are you smiling at, Mr. Parrisher? I said, you're a living example of faith. <laughs> they would they say, what do you mean? I said, just look up Hebrews 11, 1. You'll see what it means. <laughs> Some of you need to reread Hebrews 11, 1. You'll understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, the declaration of faith. Faith is more than a philosophy. By the way, if you think faith is just a philosophy, you're so far out so far out. It's more than a philosophy. The just live by faith. Their confidence is in God. Their faith is in God and the very principle of life. The righteous are in Acts chapter 16 verse 31, saved by faith. In 1 Peter 1 5, they are kept by faith. I'll move this down just a little bit. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith and not, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. And the righteous also in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, they live by faith. You know, six declarations of faith that we can find. Number one, faith will be tried many times and in many ways. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7 says this, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it, though it be tried by fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. If you're saved, you're going to go through some trials. It's just going to happen. I used to, and I, and I guess I still do, but I used to pray for patience. Then I read James. And I, and I, I, I realized, okay, that's why all these trials are happening. And so I said, well, Lord, is there any other way? And there's not. Faith knows how to wait upon the Lord. How good are you at waiting? In our society today, everyone, is, not everyone, some people are pretty good at it, but anyway, Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall renew their strength. Those that what? Wait upon the Lord. And one of the things that's the hardest to do for us today is wait. 
We live in a now society. I'll confess to you. Yesterday, Laura had gone to a funeral and Gage was with her. And so I was at the house by myself. Very unusual. I really didn't know what to do with myself. So I did the laundry. Did some more studying. Cleaned up a little bit. Shaved. Well, no, I really did. I shaved right here, right here, and right here. I got, I got the scars to prove it. So, then I got done, and I'm sitting there in the chair. I'm trying to think, what in the world? What am I going to do? So, I said, uh, I know what I'll do. I'll order me a pizza for dinner. Yeah. So I pulled out my phone, went to the first pizza site, got all confused. So I closed that one out and went to the second pizza site. After about 15, 20 minutes, I got all confused again. I don't know what in the world. I, I probably order, was going to be ordering what I didn't want and a whole lot of it. So I said, you know what, I better just close this out. So I closed it out again, the second one. And I sat there, this is about now, about 30 minutes has gone by. And I'm hungry. And I'm like, what? So I get up, walk through the kitchen like every man does, open the refrigerator and stand there. <laughs> Waiting for whatever to fall out. Nothing fell out. So I closed the refrigerator, opened the freezer, and did the same thing. So then I started, okay, I'm going to do it like a woman. I'll move something. I moved a couple of bags. And two pot pies were sitting in the back. Well, I remember, I like pot pies. So I pulled one out, looked at the directions, 35 minutes. Uh, so I opened, dip, got the oven ready and put it on a, a cake sheet. And when I looked at the cake sheet, I wish I had a cake. <laughs> so I just I plopped it in the oven and looked in the freezer again. There's got to be something I can have right now. Why? Because number one, I'm hungry. Number two, I'm impatient. And I want to eat. I want to eat something. And I found manna from heaven sitting in the door, an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> Man, was that. And so my patience was rewarded. And while that thing was cooking, I was eating an ice cream sandwich. And I, I like to let them sit out and defall just a little bit. Yeah. And then just lick the ice cream. I, oh, that is just wonderful. But waiting is something that we hate to do. They that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. Have you had to wait on the Lord for something? Man, that's not easy. Because we have it all figured out, don't we? We come up with a little trial, a little problem, a little something. Let's say, just for general purposes, let's say the car breaks down. Now, we've run through what could be a problem, and we've also run through our mind how horrible this is. And this is just, now, if you're, if you're like me, hopefully you're not, finances just throw me immediately down into the depths of despair. I mean, they, it's just my personality. It's just the way it is. I just, I'm not a, I work in accounting. Can you believe it? But I don't do accounting numbers. I do ordering and, and uh, um, 
stuff like that, even though I have to keep spreadsheets and stuff like that. But it's not my money. But when you're talking about my money, we get a little problem. And I'll go to the team and say, man, this is going to ruin us. She goes, what? I said, the tire's flat. It's going to ruin us. That's how ridiculous it gets. Matter of fact, I'll tell you how ridiculous it was. I used to do the bookkeeping for the house. Several years I did it. Finally, Tina came to me one time. She goes, would you mind if I took over? I said, well, why? Yeah, okay, why? Because I can't stand it when you do it. I said, well, I got them all straight. Yeah, but the process of getting them all straight is horrible. She goes, man, you're just, you just go off the deep end. Matter of fact, I'll never forget one time when we were missionaries, we had, I had a budget of something. And I said, uh, I called her up to where the bedroom was, where I was doing the thing. And uh, she goes, yeah. And we were getting ready to leave for a deputation trip uh, over to Asheville, North Carolina. And I said, uh, I paid all the bills. She says, okay. I said, uh, we're not eating this week. She goes, what? I said, we're not eating. I said, it's time to go on a diet. She goes, what? She goes, let me see this. And so she figured it all out. But um, we got to the end of it. We were leaving to go to Asheville, and I'll never forget. The truth, truth, really truth of the matter is we didn't have any money to go. When it was all said and done, we didn't have any money. So, being the one of great faith that I am, I went into the only place you can get by yourself nowadays. You know where that's at. In your house. So I'm in there, and I'm just down, and I mean down. And I'm talking to the Lord. And he, I'm the one doing the talking. And I'm just complaining, Lord, you know. You know I got to go. Tomorrow morning I got to leave and go to Asheville. It's an eight-hour drive. And I don't have, the tank of gas is not even full. I can't believe it. You've never let me down, but whew, what's happening here? I'm, and if I've given this already, then you know what I'm talking about. Forgive me, but I'm going to give it to you one more time. So help me, about 11 o'clock that night. I mean, I was in there just complaining. Oh, ye of little faith. Tina opens the door. Lady is standing there. She said, I don't know why. But the Lord impressed upon my heart to stop by. She was a lady that went to our church. Stop by and to give you this. Gave Tina a $100 bill. Tina, in her mind, she's like, oh, I know why. Somebody in there needs a lesson. <laughs> so she left. She called me out of the bathroom. I walk out there, and she goes, here. God will provide. That's just one time, and it that happened many times. And it was just the Lord building and renewing my strength to have faith in Him. The lessons that you and I go through on a daily basis are for a purpose as Christians. 
It is to renew your strength in having faith in God that he can take care of it, that he will take care of it. Why is faith so important? Secondly, it's the most vital piece of armor that we have. Brother John Woodward in his Sunday school class, or the connection class, he's, he's doing the armor of God. You still on that, brother? Don't know if he's gotten to this point yet, but in Ephesians 6, 16, it talks about taking the shield of faith. But I want you to notice something in Ephesians 6, 16. It says this before that verse. It says, above all. Above all. What is he saying? Above all these other pieces of armor, take the shield of faith. Because it's this shield that's going to help you to make it through the wiles of the devil as he throws these darts at you, as he tries to discourage you, as your flesh tries to discourage you, and your flesh wells up within you and tries to bring you down and hinder your fellowship with God. Take the shield of faith. Because he's crafty. And he, he knows what your weakness is. Don't you dare be fooled about that. If you don't know what your weaknesses are, ask the devil. He does. And he is going to use every possible means he can to trip you up and to hinder you from growing to be like Christ and to discourage you and to defeat you as a Christian so that you have no possibility of bringing any others to Christ or growing like Christ. So Paul says, above everything I've talked about, you need to take that shield of faith and hold it firm. Because you are going to go through some trials in your life that are going to beat you down, perhaps. But at your lowest point, wait upon the Lord. Why? Because he'll renew your strength. He'll help you to mount up with wings as eagles. And you've heard this before, but one old preacher said, I can't fly with the eagles when I'm down here with the buzzards. Something like that. And I'm going to tell you, this life will get to you and get to me and it will pound us down until we feel like we have no faith at all and you feel like, what's the point in even moving forward? Have you ever been that low? I have. I've been so low before that I felt like... Lord, do you remember I'm here? It's like the song, I'm only human. And humans forget, so Lord, <laughs> you're going to have to remind me of all the victories you've given me. But if we'll just wait and remember the scriptures have the key. When I get down and I get discouraged, not only am I doing my regular reading and studying, but sometimes the Lord will help me come across a passage. When I get down and I feel like I'm at the lowest I can possibly go, and I've given my testimony before, I won't belittle or belay the whole thing, but when I, was in that, when I was in the Army in Old Italy and I was on that hospital bed with a sign, a quarantine sign on the door, and I'm laying there, and I know in my heart and mind that God is telling me, you, you're going to make a decision right now. You'll either serve me or I'm taking you home. tell you something Christian 
you might think you're running from God. You on Facebook, you on YouTube, or maybe you here in this auditorium, if you think you can run from God, you are sadly uh, mistaken. The psalmist said, though I sink into the lowest parts of hell, behold, thou art there. No matter where he went, he said, no matter where I go, behold, thou art there. What is it that's holding you from coming back to fellowship with God? Sweet fellowship. Are you enjoying your sin? I thought I was. And by the way, I want to clarify something. I wasn't out there drinking. I never drank. I wasn't out there doing drugs. I never did that. I wasn't out there running around, having a party kite style lifestyle. I never did any of that. But I was running as fast as I could from God Almighty. God said, and I told, I'm telling you, standing on the corner of Bob Jones University, I looked up into heaven and I said to God, it's the most stupid thing I've ever said in my life. And I said to God, God, you show me what the world is like and I'll decide if I want to serve you or not. God had already called me to preach. So help me. And I got into a backslidden state. By the way, Christian, you don't ever stand still. That's stagnancy. And that's dead. And a Christian is not dead. We have been made alive in the Holy Spirit of God. You got saved. You were brought. You were quickened by the Holy Spirit and made alive. There is no stagnancy in the Christian's life. You're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. But you aren't standing still. You ever wondered how you got from one point to the other? How you got to the place where you actually are doing some of the things you're doing? How did I get to this place that I'm watching this? How did I get to the place that I'm listening to this? How did I get to the place that I'm actually partaking of things that I would never think about partaking of? Because you're not standing still. You're either moving forward in your faith or you're moving backwards. David was a man after God's own heart, but what did he do? So many, so many times. And so the Lord, I looked at the Lord, I said, you let me see the world, I'll decide. I, I grew up in a Christian home. I didn't know what, what the world was. The world. God said, all right, big boy. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to join the army. For me, I, he, you know, I thought, okay, I'll join the army. Nobody's going to tell me what to do anymore. See how stupid you get? You remember you remember in Luke, the prodigal son, what did he do? Went all off doing all kinds of craziness, right? And the Bible says when he came to himself. You know, why? Because, why does it say that? I'm glad, it, I'm glad that the Bible, is, I'm, I'm glad that those words are in there, that the Holy Spirit included that, because it just shows when you get off in sin, you become stupid. And I became stupid. And I told you, I didn't do all that stuff. But I took the talents that God gave me and I started using them for the world. Joined a band, playing for people to get drunk. Played in some places that I couldn't, uh, unbelievable. Playing and singing for the devil. Finally, God put me on that bed, and he said, all right, what you going to do? I've showed you for four years. I've showed you. What are you going to do? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Here's where it really gets scary. Christian, if you think you're running from God, and you're doing what you think you, you want to do, 
I'm going to tell you something. God, be sure your sin will find you out. God is keeping a record. He knows what's going on. And I got in that bed, and I was laying there with fever going up and down, up and down. Nobody knowing what's going on. And I know in my mind, in my heart, God is saying, what are you going to decide? Here's the scary part. I didn't immediately run to God. I laid there and tried to make a decision. That's how stupid I had become. But I'm going to tell you something. Faith. God, again, what did I say at the beginning? God had to give me the faith to be saved. God had to give me the faith. God gives us the faith to move in our life, right? You know what happened? By faith, God moved a missionary to come and to visit. And he saw my sign on the door, and he went and got geared, garbed up, and he came back and knocked on my door in the hospital. I said, come in. He walked in and introduced himself. He was a missionary, a good missionary, Bible-believing missionary. And he said, I don't know what, but God led me to this door. Is there something I can help you with or pray with you? help me he, he helped me we prayed I got forgiveness from God got out of the army got married went back to Bob Jones University and got my degree and tried to live for the Lord now it doesn't mean I've been perfect believe me Tina's not here she can't give you no details but I'm just saying this why is it so important to have faith in God? Even as a Christian, listen, your life, your Christian life depends upon it. It depends completely upon it. And if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, and you've just been putting it off and putting it off and saying, you know, I got, I'm just, you know, I'm young, I got all kinds of time. What is the Lord? The Lord, again, if you're under the sound of my voice, the Lord, again, is opening up his arms and asking for you to come to him. For by grace, and that's the grace of God, that he would even look to us to give us salvation. For by grace are you saved, how? Through faith. What does that mean? That means you take the faith that God gives you, placing it in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and what He did. He came to earth. He died on the cross. He was buried. And three days later, He rose from the grave victorious over death and hell. Placing our faith, our trust in what He did for salvation. Listen, our world says this. There's many ways. You can do this and you could do that as long as you believe in God. Listen, can I tell you, can I remind you in the book of James, the Bible says that the devils believe. But there's a difference between the devils believing and us believing. You know what the difference is? The devils believe and the Bible says they tremble. But we in our stupid states, what do we do? We say, oh, I believe in God and we don't even tremble. It doesn't shake us up whatsoever. Let me ask you something. What would it take for God to do to you in your life to shake you up enough to get you to look up instead of looking at yourself? What would God have to do to get you to look to Him instead of looking to yourself and enjoying whatever it is that you might be enjoying? get us past our pride I know what God had to do to me to get me past my pride he put me flat on my back so I could look up 
Put me in a room where there's no TV, no radio, no nothing, just a bed and me. And maybe the second or third day, I can't remember how long it took, I'm laying there and I'm looking up. And I'm there with just me, my thoughts, and God. What would it take for God to get your attention? And let me tell you, you don't want to push God. We talk about the love of God. And God is love. For God so loved the world that he gave That whosoever, not just you, not just you, not just him, not just her, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you. You want to know how I can tell you he loves you? Because you're still here. If God didn't love me, I would not be standing here right now. But out of his love, his great love. He gave me mercy and grace. But on the other side of that is holiness and judgment. God is a holy God. And he is a God that will is a just God. And judgment, Hebrews chapter 9, or chapter 10 and 9, says this. For is it is appointed unto man once to die. It's coming. If the Lord doesn't, if the Lord tarries his return, it is appointed unto you to die. Wake up. It is appointed. And this appointment, you can't just shrug off. It's coming. And then it says, but after this, the judgment. You and I are going to stand before God and give an account. Just like Brother Wood was talking about on Wednesday night. There is an accounting that is coming. I hope you're ready. I hope you know the Lord is your Savior. If you don't, it just takes, listen, you take that faith that God can give you, and you place it in Jesus Christ and Him alone, and you say this, Lord, please forgive me. I deserve hell, but I don't want to go. I want to be with you forever. Forgive me of my sin and come into my heart and be my Savior. I'm trusting in your death, burial, and resurrection for salvation. And then go and live for Him. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, I beg you. I plead with you to make the day today the day of salvation I plead with you Christian if you're here and you're trying to run from God and you're doing your own thing you know you're going to heaven but you're out here doing your own thing living your own lifestyle doing all, doing all these things trying to enjoy the world and be a Christian too by the way it, that never works it never works. Can I encourage you? God's still a God of love. And he's got grace that he's extending to you to forgive you of those things and, and to help you continue to be more like Christ. He'll forgive you whether you're unsaved right now or he'll forgive you if you are saved right now. Let's stand.
with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Can I ask this question? Are you here today and you say, Brother Greg, I, I, I've never accepted Christ as my Savior. And I want to know that when I die, I'm going to heaven. Would you just lift your hand? I want to pray for you. That's, that's what I want to do, just pray for you. I'm not going to call your name. I'm not going to call you out. I'm just going to pray for you. How about Chris, you, Christian? Say, Brother Greg, there are some things I'm going through right now that are really, really trying my faith. And I'm struggling, and I'm battling this thing. And would you pray for me? Yes. Say those names. Yes. Father, you've seen the hands and you know the heart. I pray, Lord, that all of these trials that these believers are going through, that thou wouldst encourage them, give them the grace. Make yourself real. Flood their hearts with the joy of salvation that they have. And the grace and the mercy of God. And the, and the knowledge that you will take care of things. That all these things are in your hands. And God, that you love them. And all that you, God, is want is for them to come to you and draw nigh to you. And you can wrap your loving arms around them like a father does to his children. And hold them tight and squeeze them and let them know how much you love them. Help them, Lord, to come giving all of these things to you. Lord, should there be someone here that hasn't accepted thee as their Savior, please, I'm begging that the Holy Spirit would, would pierce their heart, as the Bible says the Word of God does, and help them to understand their need today. I ask this in thy holy name, Lord Jesus. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, Holly's going to play an invitation song. Is there something you need to come and lay at Jesus' feet? Is there a burden that you need to give to the Lord? Lay it at the altar today. Don't tarry. Come on and give it to Him. Lay it down, give it to Him, and leave it there.
being here today. Don't forget to pray for all of these that he mentioned, especially pa our pastors will be traveling back, I think, tomorrow. Is that correct? And their family. And uh, all the others that are traveling. I don't know what it means, but please pray for them. Uh, traveling is not an easy thing anymore. It can be a, if you sit down and think about it, it can be a scary thing. So uh, please pray for me. Aren't you glad, though, that God's hands are on us even when we're not in church? And he protects us and watches over us and all that. Well, don't, please come back tonight. We have the Ambassador Bible, Baptist Bible College Quartet that's going to be with us. And uh, good music. And I think every Christian ought to be listening to them good music, don't you? So let's encourage them by being here tonight. I hope you will. And Brother Chris will be bringing the message tonight. I'm looking forward to hearing that as well. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. And Brother John, since you're up here, would you mind coming up and praying and dismiss us? Today, Father, we come before you now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you for... Allow me to be here this morning, dear Lord, to hear this message to remind me that no matter what, I need to have faith in you, to trust you. Lord, I pray be with our pastor and his family as they're gone and give them traveling mercies tomorrow, protect them, keep them safe, and Lord, the other people that are uh, away on vacation or traveling, I pray to keep them safe, bring them home. Be with us all now as we leave here. Give us travel your mercies, and Lord, thank you for everyone that's come today. Lord, we love you. I pray that uh, we'd love you with all, our, with all our heart and soul and mind. Jesus Christ, holy name I pray, amen.